Hello once again, this is the Pencrest High School AP Physics 1 video series. This is video 7B, Rotational Kinematics. Now, we know already that uh, kinematics is the study of motion. Uh, clearly, rotational kinematics refers to the study of rotational motion. Now, the good news is that uh, the concepts of position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration are virtually the same uh, but with one critical difference. Uh, instead of measuring distances with meters as we did before, uh, rotational kinematics measures uh, position and displacement with angular measurements. So consider an object that uh, starts at position A uh, as shown below. Uh, the blue line is the indicator of the position of the object as it rotates. Um, <clears throat> this object is rotating counterclockwise. It's indicated by the red arrow. Uh, we can see that when it's at position B, uh, the object has rotated through 90 degrees. Uh, we would describe that as the change in the position or the angular displacement of the object. Um, we can also call it rotational displacement. Um, when the object rotates around to position C, uh, we can see that the, that the displacement is now 180 degrees, um, <clears throat> and, and so on. There is um, another way to measure angular displacement. Uh, this is the radian measure. You're actually more familiar with radians than you think you are. Uh, we know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, where r is the radius of the circle. Uh, we also know that the circumference is the distance around the entire circle. <clears throat> this is where the 2 pi comes from. It's a measure of all the way around, uh, meaning 360 degrees of rotational or angular displacement. So the 2 pi <clears throat> is in radians. We would say that 360 degrees uh, is equal to 2 pi radians. Uh, we know also that 180 degrees is halfway around the circle, um, also known as pi radians. Uh, the conversion works this way. We know that 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. <clears throat> if we divide both sides by 2 pi, we can see that uh, 1 radian is about 57.3 degrees. Now frequently we're going to need to go back and forth uh, from radians to degrees, uh, particularly um, when we're using rotational kinematics with um, standard two-dimensional vector notation magnitude at some mathematical angle. Um, so if we do some kinematics and we find that an object has an angular displacement of 4.24 radians, we want to convert it to degrees. We would set it up as uh, shown here. Here's the 4.24 radians. This is my conversion factor. You'll notice that the numerator 360 degrees equals the denominator 2 pi in radians. This doesn't change the actual quantity. It just changes the units. The radians cancel. We multiply 4.24 times 360 divided by 2 pi and we would find that 4.24 radians equals 243 degrees. <clears throat> Angular or rotational displacement is typically given the symbol theta. Uh, we're familiar with that use uh, with the use of that symbol as a as an angle indicator uh, for use with rotational kinematics formulas which you'll see soon. Uh, we want theta measured in radians. Uh, in the event that you need to input an angular displacement or position in uh, WebAssign, you would use RAD um, for the units. <coughs> Just as we did with linear variables, uh, x and x naught and so on, we need to make a distinction between where the object is and how far it has moved, uh, the difference between position and displacement. Reporting a position in two dimensions requires us to use an angle between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi radians. This is not the case for angular displacement. Uh, 
it often can and will be greater than two pi radians if the object uh, rotates around more than one time. <clears throat> now we have a new standard sign convention for rotational motion. Uh, you might recall that um, when we, we dealt with uh, linear kinematics, right is positive and left is negative, uh, or up and down. For rotational motion, uh, we refer to the direction of the motion as uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, counterclockwise is positive, this way, and clockwise is negative. This is going to go for any of the familiar vector quantities that we dealt with in uh, linear kinematics when we transfer them to a rotational sense. So, <clears throat> we know that if an object's position changes, it has a displacement, uh, then that means that it has a velocity. Uh, the same principle applies to rotational motion. If, it's, if an object is rotating, we describe how fast it's rotating in terms of angular displacement divided by time. Uh, the angular velocity uh, is uh, defined as omega. This is the lowercase curly w here. Define it as the change in angular position over time. Uh, omega equals delta theta over delta t. It's measured in radians per second and has the same sign convention as displacement. Counterclockwise positive, clockwise negative. There are uh, other ways to report angular velocity, uh, most notably RPM, which is rotations or revolutions per minute. Uh, engines, for example, typically describe their angular velocity in RPMs. Um, <clears throat> your car may have a tachometer in it. Um, this indicates the angular velocity of the crankshaft, which sends the torque and the power to the drive axle. Um, standard autom automobile engines rotate at some thousands of rotations per minute. Um, you'll see the tachometer, if your car has one, looks like this. It says RPMs times a thousand. Uh, usually they operate somewhere between two and three thousand RPMs. Uh, you'll notice, uh, hopefully if you're not driving, but a passenger in a car that has a tachometer, you'll notice that when the car changes gears, um, the RPMs will, will change. Typically it'll drop as you cycle up through the gears. Um, back when most cars were uh, standard shift or manual transmission that was supposed to tell the driver when to change the uh, gear. Um, most cars now are automatic transmission so um, the feeling is that the car knows better than you do as to when it wants to change gears. So learn how to drive a stick shift. It's good for you. Now we may occasionally need to convert from RPMs to radians per second. Um, certainly for use in the kinematic formulas we want radians per second for omega. So we'll say that uh, car's engine rotates at uh, 2400 RPMs. Uh, one rotation is 2 pi radians, we know that already. And um, 60 seconds is uh, one minute. So we're going to convert 2400 RPMs to radians per second. Again we have two conversion factors. The RPM is rotations per minute. First, we're going to take care of the rotations. We're going to cancel it by putting one rotation in the denominator uh, equal to 2 pi radians. This uh, conversion factor is equal to 1. And then we're going to take care of the minutes in the denominator by putting it in the numerator here. Dividing by 60 seconds, 2400 times 2 pi divided by 60 we would see that it's 251 radians per second. <clears throat> uh, we might also refer at times to the magnitude of the angular velocity. This is uh, the angular speed. Um, angular speed, of course, would never be negative because we don't pay any attention to the direction. Now, hopefully you can see the pattern. Um, if the angular velocity is changing, if it's getting faster or slower, we would uh, describe it as having an angular acceleration. Definition is the same, uh, except we use the angular velocity instead of linear velocity. Angular velocity is given the symbol alpha. 
looks like this looks kind of like a Jesus fish defined as the change in angular velocity over time so alpha equals delta omega over delta t it's measured in radians per second squared same sign convention if it's uh, counterclockwise positive clockwise negative now before we move on the uh, perception of the physical direction of angular acceleration is uh, difficult uh, if an object has some angular velocity omega and it's speeding up we would say that the angular acceleration alpha points in the same direction as omega so if omega is positive and increasing in magnitude if it's getting faster then alpha is also positive and counterclockwise this would be the rotational analogy to plus plus a which you might remember means to the right and speeding up uh, we might call it plus plus alpha if um, omega is positive or counterclockwise and slowing down alpha would point in the opposite direction clockwise and it would be negative this would be the analogy for plus minus a we might call it plus minus alpha you can see the pattern if it's rotating clockwise and has a negative omega if it's speeding up alpha is in the same direction and is also negative if it's rotating clockwise and slowing down alpha is in the opposite direction and is therefore positive so looking at this uh, sort of a uh, pictorial sense we have a bike wheel that's uh, rotating with some counterclockwise omega um, if alpha is also counterclockwise they're both positive and the the angular velocity is increasing it's getting faster if we have the same bike wheel rotating counterclockwise but slowing down the alpha points the other way so the alpha would be considered negative and the rotations the uh, angular velocity would be decreasing if omega is negative and alpha is negative getting faster but in a clockwise direction and if omega is clockwise and alpha is counterclockwise alpha is positive omega is negative the object would be slowing down okay now rotational kinematics works the same way as linear or straight line kinematics you'll recognize the formulas on the left uh, we use these for uh, linear or straight line kinematics those on the right look virtually the same we're replacing x with theta x naught with theta naught omega with v a with alpha um, the formulas work exactly the same way except wherever you had meters before now you have radians <clears throat> you'll notice that this formula here omega squared equals omega naught squared plus 2 alpha theta minus theta this is um, not on the formula sheet not sure why but uh, you can see that it proceeds directly from this one if you replace V with Omega V naught with Omega naught a with alpha X with theta X naught with theta naught you can easily go from one to the other now again using these formulas correctly uh, requires conversion to radians and seconds so if you have degrees or um, RPMs or something uh, you need to change them to radians and seconds in order to use these formulas properly there are times when um, we need to apply rotational kinematics and linear kinematics in the same situation for example we might have a rotating object and we might want to know something about <clears throat> the linear kinematics of a particular point on the object so we have our bike wheel we have this point P marked in green on the outer edge of the bike wheel as the wheel begins to uh, rotate from rest it's got some positive counterclockwise alpha uh, sometime later the wheel has rotated through this much angular displacement point P is located up here now and the wheel is rotating with some angular velocity Omega we can see that point P travels in a circular path we can use uh, some aspects of the circular motion kinematics that we're familiar with um, point P has a linear velocity that's associated with the rotation of the wheel this linear velocity is tangent to the path we know 
that the linear instantaneous linear velocity is tangent to the path um, taking into consideration the direction of the wheels rotation which in this case is uh, counterclockwise the magnitude of the velocity is given by V equals omega times R R is the radius of the wheel point P is on the outer edge so you might remember V equals 2 pi R over T where T is the period for circular motion we can't use that formula here because the wheel is speeding up its rotation is speeding up so it doesn't have a consistent period T so the linear velocity would be um, increasing as the object accelerates um, <clears throat> Notice that uh, omega, which is in radians per second, times meters, um, the radians magically disappear when we want them to. So we get units of meters per second, which is what we expect for a linear velocity. Point P also has um, linear components to its acceleration, also associated with the rotation of the wheel. Uh, we're already familiar with uh, centripetal acceleration, A sub C, which points toward the center of the path. Uh, we know that's shown here in blue. Um, the, the new aspect here is the tangential acceleration, A sub T, which is shown in red. Tangent to the path, as the name implies. Um, the magnitudes of these components, uh, the new one A sub T, is alpha times R. Again, alpha is in radians per second squared, r is in meters. The radians go away, we get meters per second squared for a sub t, which we expect. We know also that a sub c equals v squared over r. If we substitute <coughs> um, omega r for v and square it and divide by r, we would see that a sub c also equals omega squared times R. Uh, the actual uh, acceleration of point P at that location is the vector sum of A sub C and A sub T. Um, by definition, A sub C and A sub T are at right angles, so we could uh, simply use the Pythagorean theorem to get the actual acceleration. Now we're going to turn to uh, gears and coupled wheels and belts. Uh, they transfer rotational motion from one object to another. Typically the outer edges of the gears or the wheels are in contact, uh, therefore the linear velocity of the outer edges of these objects has to be the same because the edges don't slip relative to one another. So when we look at this situation here, the blue gear has some radius R1, it's rotating counterclockwise with uh, some angular velocity omega 1. Um, its edge is in contact with the red gear radius R2 um, here at point A. <clears throat> the red gear ro rotates with some other angular velocity omega 2 and the key is that the linear velocity of the edges at this point A, the linear velocity of the blue gear and the red gear has to be the same. So therefore, omega 1 R1 equals omega 2 R2. The red gear has to be rotating clockwise because the blue gear is rotating counterclockwise in order for this linear velocity to be tangent to both paths and straight down. Now the yellow gear are also uh, is in contact with the red gear uh, at point B same reasoning applies so omega 2 r2 has to equal omega 3 r3 uh, the yellow gear is going to rotate back in the counterclockwise direction uh, this arrangement is sometimes called a gear train uh, they effectively multiply angular velocity based on the ratios of the um, radii the relationship would also extend to the tangential acceleration if the gears are accelerating uh, but not to a sub c. So we would we would see that the tangential accelerations of points a and b alpha 1 r1, alpha 2 r2, alpha 3 r3 are equal. 
but the centripetal accelerations are not. What we find is that the smaller the gear in the gear train, the angular velocity must increase, which then um, tends to increase the centripetal acceleration of the points on the outer edge. Okay, now we have uh, belted wheels, which follow the same pattern, although the direction of the rotation doesn't change. Um, the, the belt passes over both wheels. And what we find is that the, the belt has a constant linear velocity. So as it passes over the outer edge of each of the wheels, it doesn't slip. Um, so once again, the, the linear velocity of the outer edge, omega 1 r1, has to equal omega 2 r2. So the belt travels uh, with the same linear speed throughout its length. Once again, this would also apply to the tangential acceleration if there, if there were one. Alpha 1 r1 equals alpha 2 r2. Okay, that's it for rotational kinematics. Next up is Newton's laws for rotation. Until then, enjoy. See you again soon.